Batman, Gargoyle of Gotham, issue two. Raphael, Grandpa, writing and drawing. This is one of the Black Label books. This is the one where he is investigating a serial killer, but there's also this uh, this old-timey character with a tough of hair who is... Uh, it was working in a TNT factory, an illegal TNT yeah. factory, may I add. I will yeah. say, out of all the books uh, that we've done with Black Label, this is the one that I struggled a little bit to remember the first issue. Mm-hmm. Um, although, first things first, actually, I was right. Matt did read yeah. this first issue. Yeah. Uh, he messaged me at the weekend said, oh, uh, by the way, Peter, you were right. I had read this. <laughs> so I searched my comicsology, and the first issue came up and went, oh, I did read it. So talk about struggling to remember. I forgot I completely even read it. And it's it's not a quality thing. I think it's a – I just read too many comics. So when there's a big gap like there was from – when did the last one come out? It was a few months ago, yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. So when there's a big gap in them, I, I tend to forget. And then when I started reading this, I went – I started thumbing through that issue. And I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's the old-timey cartoon dude. And there was that awesome uh, sequence in the, the film room. Yeah, you know, yeah. Where the projector and stuff was, and it, it started to started to gear. Uh, this one, though, I don't think I will forget because it makes some decisions here. There, uh, there's some interesting direction. Obviously, we see the killer. Yeah. I, th- I think we see the killer. Who's this uh, more this cloaked figure with these big spikes mm-hmm. coming out out of the gloves? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, they may be a woman. I can't, it's hard to tell. Uh, uh-huh. But uh, we we see the killer, but it continues this this thing that the first issue was doing and th- this is what came flooding back to me as i was reading this is that there was a lot of stuff in the first issue about bruce wanting to let go of bruce he wants to just be batman mm-hmm. and he's ready to give that up and alfred's kind of fighting him to say no bruce wayne's an important part of who you are and you have to kind of preserve that and this issue goes further with that there's like a protest yep. outside of the wayne building that at one point bruce like someone notices him in the car and they say hey bruce do, do you want to comment on anything that's going on and he's like i will give legitimacy to your stupid story piss off you peants and uh <laughs> alfred's like you just legitimized it <laughs> you idiot well then he tells alfred to shut up he does he's a, he's a whiny little bitch a- in this book yeah, I don't like I don't like Bruce in this one even more than you know. We all joke that I'm the anti Batman guy, but we all know that I secretly love Batman. He I did. don't like this version. This version sucks. Yeah, he's it, like, clearly yeah. obviously that's the arc of the book. He's going to yeah. you know learn something by the end for sure. Yeah. Um, the other it was yeah, there you go. I was gonna say he can he can disrespect that person that you know trying to get social change across Gotham from a ground grassroots effort, but you don't you don't talk to your surrogate dad that's cared for you his whole life and your whole life that way, man. Yeah, he, Just leave leave the butler alone, man. The, the, this is a, a more edgy Bruce for sure. Um, yeah. The other big part of this is that Gordon has information from Batman, and the police don't like that he's got intel from Batman and, and uh-huh. see it as a problem. You know, we don't work with vigilantes, so it's really doing yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And Gordon's kind of threatened with his job uh, for, for doing so. Yeah. Um, so th- that's that's all going. Uh, we do see... Is, is it the killer or just a woman who's at this uh, church uh, in a red coat and is sort of watching yeah. as all these, like, uh, like, moths or whatever they are are, like, mm-hmm. swarming the place? There's a lot going on, okay? There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. So when we see her, she looks very scary. I don't know if she's going to turn out to be the actual killer. I think there's bigger things going on when we get to the end. Yeah. Uh, that, that deal with Bruce and Batman and the identity of, of Gotham in and of itself. Yeah. There's... However, the way that it's paced where I don't know what's going on. I feel like I'm going through a labyrinth where each turn is something different. Yeah. But the, like the, the big thing is that Bruce was a patient who was treated mm-hmm. by this Dr. Arkham, because that's the big thing. The victims that were in the first mm-hmm. issue had all been treated by this Dr. Quentin right. at Arkham uh, before Arkham just became an insane asylum. It had other wards. It had other things going on. And Bruce hears this because Gordon shows up at the Wayne mansion asking Alfred mm-hmm. about it. And Bruce is like, what the hell, Alfred? What's he talking about? I don't know anything about this. And Alfred basically explains that after your parents died later that night you found a homeless guy you thought was the killer and beat him to a pulp with a like a with a metal bar or something uh, yeah it's so only beat him with a stick to within an inch of his life and he's been in a wheelchair ever since 
yeah, so Bruce is sort of like dealing with that, and he's like, well, if these memories were wiped for me, is it possible that Batman wasn't even my idea, that this doctor put the idea into my mm -hmm. head to like try and deal with the anger and the rage that mm -hmm. I was feeling? So Bruce actually goes to visit this old man who's in a wheelchair, and uh -huh. the old man um, admits that he was the killer, actually, because he says all I wanted was the, the pearl necklace. Um, he was a junkie. He was looking for a score. Uh, your dad challenged me, kind of. Kind of puts the blame on them. You know? Which, uh, gonna upset Bruce uh, on, a whole, on a whole different level, right? Yeah, obviously this um, is a very conflicting thing to hear, is that, okay, he'd, mm -hmm. he'd found the killer all this time ago, but he almost paralyzed him, and now this yep. guy's like, yeah, you scared me so much, I didn't even want to confess. Um, so Bruce is in a bit of a pissy mood. This is when the, the whole thing where he's asked about the the, yeah. the, the protesters in the car because he's driving past. Yep. Um, and then he's really, he's a bit of a dick to Gordon, and he says, oh, I work alone, I don't need the police's help, mm -hmm. and he's really shitty to him. So, yep. yeah, like it's really doing this stuff where he's a very unlikable version of Bruce. Uh, in this and then the whole idea that maybe on some level yeah there's there's some extra manipulation admittedly if this was in continuity i would hate all this retconning of like oh yes. you know later that night he did something violent and then he was at a, well, at a therapist <clears throat> and he doesn't remember any of it i'm yeah. glad this is an, a continuity story where i can let all that slide okay let's see what your idea mm -hmm. is and there's some gorgeous art here you know batman standing in the top of this like radio tower in the rain gorgeous in the rain. stuff oh my god did i have that page and I was like, oh, my God, it's so moody. Like, there's that. Um, also, that that wasn't just a nightstick. That was Gordon's nightstick that he beat the guy with. So oh, yeah. Okay. It, it also gets Gordon because, you know, in this version, Gordon was there as a sergeant um, uh, to, to comfort Bruce and, and whatnot. So, like, the identity or the birth of, of Batman and all of this stuff is so intrinsically tied to Gordon, to this doctor, to everything else. Um, yeah. And then this priest from the church who Gordon goes to see, um, mm -hmm. although he's not expected, so it's actually not one of the patients, right? And he goes to see him and is surprised to find that he's a priest. And then the end, towards the end of the issue, he starts seeing these like black butterflies flying around. And then we go in and the priest seemingly has turned into this like half bird man kind of monster he yeah, yeah. like uh <laughs> i i don't know it's definitely insect like you I, know like I, I, that's what all the mods are about yeah i, I would have just um, said that he like the, the first full page panel you see or spread you see of him i would just say it's a guy in a mask and a cloak but his hands are all yeah. like bird like they're all kind of yeah. you know uh thin and and whatnot mm -hmm. and yeah fr from here uh, the the old cartoon timey villain, like he uh, causes a ruckus in the police van that he's been transported in, so he's breaking out. Uh, so and then the girl in the red jacket shows up, who who I'm thinking is not the villain actually. I think the killer we no. see at the start is not her. This is definitely someone yep. different. Um, but she jumps in uh, into the fight to fight the Birdman, is what I'm going to call yep. him. And then Gordon has her, uh, at, 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 you know, at point blank with his gun. And he's arresting mm -hmm. her. Um, and then Batman crashes through the window, fighting uh, a villain, and lands in the, uh, I don't know, the, the basement of the city with this villain character who's got all these druids with, like, cult masks on. I have no idea what happened at the end, to be honest. Yeah, so, like, it gets super weird and... and... For me, like the best way, right? So he's there's something going on here in Gotham that has made that has created people, I guess, like Batman, right? Because you could argue this version of Batman is exceptionally violent as well. Um, and uh, Gordon finds that like cross thing in in the wood, uh, and that's what the symbol is that they're um, that all of these people have, right? It's it's not quite a cross, but it's you know like three stakes, you know one cross over another with one in the middle, um, that the that the priest seemingly dropped right is that what led him there? I don't remember this one was a lot. 
Yeah, well, there was a... I need to go back and find it, because the, the villain at the end, when he's monologuing, mm -hmm. he's talking about a cup yeah. falling and stuff. And earlier on, there was yeah. a a panel of someone holding, like, a red demon child. <laughs> yeah. I want to go back and get the context for that to see how it links up mm -hmm. with the ending, because uh, oh, here we go. Right. So, yeah, it was when Alfred was telling Bruce about what happened uh, going to see the mm -hmm. doctor. Um, yeah, and he was having strange visions a demon cub with a broken wing and we see this little red sort of like bat demon thing mm -hmm. in someone's hand and apparently that was like his nightmare and then the fact that mm -hmm. the next panel has a black and white panel of like young bruce with the next to his dead yeah. parents and the only thing that's in color is the red blood it made yeah. me think that it was like oh the blood of his parents formed this in his hand but i don't know if that's just because i'm connecting those two pages together yeah uh, a little bit but um oh, there it is yeah. yeah, Alan, it, it's the scene where, where Batman's getting on Gordon and that he doesn't need help and stuff. He finds this symbol, this, you know, the, the cross stakes thing, the cross stakes cross. And he's the, the one that gives it to Gordon. And that's where Gordon goes to start talking to the priest. And he has it on a book behind all his, you know, what looked like larva. Um, and then that what ends up being on the... Uh, guy at the end, so there's some order that is pulling strings over Gotham, and like they call Bruce, you know, a uh, child because he says a demon cup falls over it and breaks its wings, and it becomes the devil and kills the man. Welcome home, child. Actually, um, so, uh, I want to recant something I said. Uh, the girl in the yeah. red jacket who shows up to fight the uh -huh. priest uh, when it's attacking Gordon. Yeah. That is the villain at the start because she has yeah. the same spikes coming out of her gloves as mm -hmm. her. Uh, yep. So I don't think necessarily she's a killer. Like the yeah. Villain, no, I say. agree. I I think at the start it felt like she was being presented that yep. way, but uh, clearly she was keeping an eye on this priest because of what he was. Yep. He's clearly a part yeah, of. She she doing. goes into the church as I was just thumbing back through. She goes to the church and he notices that she's there. Yeah, and I will puts say him on edge. That's that's so many like different moving parts that. I read this quite mm -hmm. early on, and I was really struggling to remember yeah. <laughs> how it yeah. all came together and where it went. And even now, I'm looking at it again. I'm still not entirely sure what the ending means. Um, yeah. But well, it, it's seeming to me that there's a, a process in Gotham, right, where these people that have experienced trauma, right, are are ending up doing things. And Bruce is one of those people. So now, is is he going to be in her sights, right? Because they welcome Batman as if he's their creation. Well, I mean, are they just taking credit for that? They don't know he's Bruce. Well, it made me think the know? cult leader is the doctor from Arkham, and he it's all of his yeah. patients that are all becoming. And yes. they, this this girl with the spikes is the killer, but she's killing them because they're all turning yeah. into like evil monsters or something. Right. So, right. Uh, oh, and what does that have to do with the cartoony guy? That that's the other thing too. That's yes. the seemingly uh, independent that I'm sure we'll pull together. Yeah, I think that was my thing reading this, is that it felt like it was moving far away from what the plot was in the first issue. Yep. Uh, I'm still mm -hmm. curious, but it definitely feels a lot messier yeah. to me right now. But I don't know how much of that is just because I, I, I was barely remembering the first issue and it was coming back mm -hmm. to me as I was reading this. So that's maybe the sort of thing where this might read much better when you can read all three or four issues, however many it is, in yeah. one chunk. Because this was a lot to try and take in and also remember how it connects to the first issue. But yeah. there's definitely some interesting craft here. I think the layouts are good. I think the art, Batman's mm -hmm. cool aside, I think the art is yeah. is good. Yeah, but it's consistent. So I feel like that's just Grandpa's style. Also his name. I can't. Uh -huh. I, I feel like I'm talking about my grandfather. You know, that's just Grandpa's style. Um, but but yeah, for doing it all their own, it's it's, it's a pretty strong effort. Uh, for sure for sure i'm definitely interested i just i hope next time it's not out in a week with those 11 other books i hope i get to like digest yeah. it a bit better um, um but uh but definitely curious we get we get to that cult at the end and i'm always down for evil culty stuff especially versus batman so yeah um, uh all right what are you giving gargoyle of gotham issue two <clears throat> because of the the amount of new moving parts uh i'm gonna give it 7.5 um because it's just there's just a lot going on. It's kind of a victim of yeah. this many books, uh, but the art is really carrying it. So yeah, I, I'll, I'll probably say it's just a straight seven, and I really kind of respect that. I enjoyed the act of reading it, but it definitely felt like it went, was going places at the end, and I I wasn't taking mm -hmm. it in as well as I could. So 
Uh, it's the sort of thing that a reread of the whole thing might improve everything for me, but uh, I'll say seven because I, I do think there's good art and there's good layouts. Mm-hmm. I think some of the themes it's playing with, with like you know Bruce wanting to give up Bruce, and we've seen this done before, yeah. but it's, it feels really aggressive in this case. Bruce really feels like a dick mm-hmm. in this one. I'm yeah. curious to see where it goes and see if I enjoy the ending. Mm-hmm.